We're back with another episode, episode 38 of The Clinical Dose. I have uh, Nuts in here, for, or Tim, I guess, is probably his real name. Yeah, um, Tim's, Tim's my real name. Making right? his uh, video debut. Yes. So let's get started, have five questions. Have you ever trained on a nootropic uh, or mental focus up in place of a stim free pre? And this one's from John Riggs from YouTube. What about you, have you trained on a um, nootropic? I, of free? I have, but not without a pump. Okay, so, so you stack them together. Yeah, I'd st always stack it with something. You're yeah. chopping on its own, not really. Um, if you just need a stimulant kick, sure, I suppose. But um, yeah, I, if you want some other performance aspects, you're probably going to need to put something with it. I yeah, think. I'm the same. I haven't I haven't trained on a nootropic by itself because yeah. it is missing things like your beta alanine, something for muscle power. Um, you do yeah. get the good energy and the mental focus and usually a bit less caffeine, which is what I've been using at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm the same as you. I do stack with a stim based pre just to get that better blood flow um, yeah. as well. I think they're the thing that's really missing. Mm -hmm. You can do that if you're someone who just looks for energy um, and mental focus. Sure, train on a nootropic or mental focus sub. But yeah, I'm the same as you. I'll use it by itself um, yeah. throughout the day. Yeah, definitely not just for training. Um, yeah. Yeah, throughout the day, it's fine. But yeah, I wouldn't be using it just on its own for a training session. Um, you might not notice it so much if you're doing something like arms, I suppose. Yeah. But if you're doing a bigger muscle group, um, you probably will notice the difference considerably. So. Yeah, I mean, out of the mm. five things we look for a pre, it really hits two. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So, yeah. Mm. Cool. Next question. How would you train if you work 12-hour days and work midnights? And this is from Fatal819 from YouTube. And I'm assuming by working midnights, I mean, you do shift work, so it's like 12 hours during the day, and then next week might be 12 hours overnight. Um, that's what I'm assuming here. Yeah. Um, yeah, how would you train? Um, depends on, I guess, when you um, are free before or after, but I know um, a personal friend of mine, he does it either before or after, obviously, his shift, um, yep. being, yeah, a you know, a shift work at the mines. Yeah. Um, he's going to be doing it either before um, or after, but before for him is usually when he tries to do it. Okay. Just because obviously you can wake up a little bit early, it's daylight, you can still do all your normal things. Um, you can try and eat, eat some meals and that sort of thing. Go to the gym um, and then go to work. So that's what he usually does. And I think that's, you know, for this situation, that's what you'd probably do as well. Because um, afterwards, you know, it's a long 12 hour shift, you probably don't really want to go and train. Yeah. It's gonna be probably a bit tiring and you really probably need to start getting sleep anyway. So. I think that's the thing, when you're working 12 hour days, you're probably gonna be tired, you're probably then gonna take a pre-workout, train for say an hour or two, and then that pre-workout's still gonna be kicking in, you're probably not gonna sleep, that next 12 hour day is gonna be worse. Yeah. So I would agree, yeah. I would try and get your session in before work, mm. um, and that's whether you're doing kind of mornings or night shift. Um, it can be difficult if you do like a two week swing and you yeah. switch, switch over, it yeah. can be quite difficult, but mm. I would try and get it in beforehand. Yeah, it's, yeah, you probably, it's hard to squeeze things in, um, I guess with things changing shift yeah. wise, but yeah, um, always before is probably gonna be the easiest no matter what time it is. Um, yeah. Just because of, you know, how the day works out, it's gonna be easy to basically get a session in, go to work, and then go to sleep rather than go to work, have a session. Like you said, stimulants gonna keep you awake. Yeah. Um, or even even not just stimulants, but training in general is probably gonna keep you awake a little bit longer Definitely. after training. Yeah. So yeah, you wanna probably steer away from that if you can. Yeah. Next question, apple cider vinegar, should I be taking it? From Luke Nelson from YouTube. Your thoughts, do you take apple <laughs> cider vinegar in the morning, um, so I've, daily I've, ritual? I've, no, not really, I've tried it before, but um, I'd say, why do you wanna take it? Um, yep. Probably, um, and if it's for a certain reason, uh, gut health or whatever it is, or, yeah. um, you know, immune system stuff, sure, um, but make sure everything else is fine. So you sleep, your normal diet, all yeah. of that probably first before trying to stack in yeah. apple cider vinegar and think it's gonna fix your you know, digestion or whatever it is yeah. you're gonna take it for. I think, yeah, like, exactly like you said, I think that apple cider vinegar thing in the morning, people mix it with lemon juice, salt, whatever they put in there. Mm. Um, it's such a little piece that people get hung up on, like, I need to have that in the morning because it's going to help everything else. Sure, yeah. it might. Um, but if your diet's shit or your training's shit, really, mm. what's the point? Your, this apple cider vinegar isn't going to be a miracle uh, cure to save your digestive system because your diet's shit. Yeah, and that's, yeah, a lot of these sort of, yeah. not not fad things, because it is something that can obviously benefit you, but yeah. um, a lot of things like this are out there where they think, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'll take this, I'll take this, but 
it's actually not going to do a whole lot if everything else isn't in yeah. check. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it can help with blood sugar, insulin sensitivity, like you said, digestion as mm. well, um, cholesterol levels. Yeah. Just be aware with apple cider vinegar, if you are taking it, it's very acidic, so it can cause damage to your teeth. So usually mix it with water and dilute it yep. as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's really a personal preference um, whether you take it or not. I don't think it's a, yeah, basil. Um, yeah, I don't think you need to take it essentially. Yeah, I mean, definitely. If you've already got some and um, you want to take it, by all means do take it because yeah. it, is, it is good. Um, it's got a whole heap of benefits. Yeah. But yeah, make sure everything else is where it needs to be. Otherwise, exactly. um, yeah, that's, you've got bigger concerns essentially. Definitely. Next one, importance of women taking creatine from Lulu Z Campbell from Instagram Q&A. Your thoughts? Um, just like the guys, just like, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, essentially. Um, realistically, like if you, yeah. you know, guys take it for certain reasons, you know, to strength, gains, yeah. endurance, whatever it is, um, you know, gain lean muscle, yeah. it's the same for females. Yeah, I mean, most females training who want to look at taking a creatine, mm. you're going to get the same benefits in increasing ATP production, which is then going to help with muscle power, uh, muscle endurance and contractile ability, essentially, of your muscles. Um, so you get the same benefits of that. Yeah. Women tend to shy away from it because it makes you become bulky. Um, yeah, but you that's hold the thing. some water. And that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. It obviously doesn't though. I mean, more lean muscle gain is going to mean you're probably more toned and yeah. you're going to feel and look better. So that's generally going to be a desirable effect with everyone, not yeah. just men as women as well. So definitely, and the water that creatine is known. It, yeah, you do hold some water with it. It's stored in your muscle cells, so it mm. actually makes your muscles pop a bit more. Yeah. It's not under your skin, so it doesn't make you feel look fluidy. Um, yeah, I think it's a problem when people take it. They might gain a kilo, half a kilo, and it's like, oh no, I've taken creatine. <laughs> it's making me bulky. I'm gaining weight now. Too, too um, much muscle. When it really is not designed to do that. It's designed yeah. to um, help your performance. Yeah, and yeah, for that reason, yeah, females take it, sure. Yeah, I agree. There's no issue. This one's a bit of a long one, the next one. Yeah. <clears throat> So is Corbolic a daily supplement? I read this article and it said, take Maxigenin for a minimum of six weeks and a maximum of 12 weeks. It says uh, it yields more muscle gains and isn't harmful. What are your thoughts on that? From Matthew Heffer on YouTube. Um, thoughts? When <laughs> I have used it, I don't think I've um, taken breaks really from it. No, no, Personally, neither have I um, from any Laxagenin based supplement, yeah, whether it's Corbolic um, just or like if, if you're using it, use it as long as you want really um it's like you said it's not there's no, nothing harmful so yeah. um the reasons for cutting it out is, are probably not there yeah um you know whereas like if you're talking about a pre-workout you know stimulants where you heavy stim yeah. pre you know it's worth taking um breaks with those just Definitely. because you know it's going to reset things a little bit more like yeah. your adrenals and that so with laxagen, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about probably taking breaks. Um, obviously, I don't know which article that's yeah, come from. Yeah, if you had the article, uh, chuck it in the comments because we'd yeah. love to read it. Because mm. from what I've seen, there isn't really a lot of studies done on laxagen. And there's a lot of companies writing up their own articles based on anecdotal evidence, essentially. Mm. Um, but there's no real base study. There is studies on uh, brainier steroids, which are essentially the class of from where laxagen comes from. Some studies on those in terms of the increasing muscle protein synthesis and muscle gain, um, but nothing that I could see specifically on laxagenin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've never cycled it. I tend to take it all the time. Mm. Um, I haven't seen any downside. Laxagenin has little and and androgenic effect, um, so there's no real need to cycle it. Yeah. But in saying that, if you're taking it, um, you're not feeling the effects anymore, and you want to come off for four weeks, come off, take it again, see, and then you, you'll probably feel those effects again. Um, yeah, so that yeah, that's probably the only thing. If thing. You've noticed, uh, you know, with core bollock in particular, yeah. um, if you have noticed that you're not feeling as strong and not, yeah. you know, feeling as good in the gym from using it, um, yeah, if you do want to take a break, then, yeah, go for it. And then, yeah. again, if you do feel a considerable difference when you do that, sure, you know, maybe chuck a week or two week break in every now and then, but um, realistically, it's shouldn't make much of a difference. Yeah, a lot of these companies will put only use for four to eight weeks, mm -hmm. um, just for legal purposes and they're kind of... Yeah, it's, yeah, they have to sort of cover themselves for exactly. misuse essentially, um, which yeah. people do with supplements. Yeah, um, that's it. Yeah. Five questions. Easy. If you have a question for the next episode of The Clinical Dose, chuck it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to it. Thank you, Tim, for stepping in. Thank you for having me. <laughs> 
Make sure you subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel keep, to keep up to date with all the latest episodes of The Clinical Dose. Turn your post notifications on on whatever device you're watching this on. And until next time, where are we coming to and from, Tim? Massivejoes.com. Stay massive. Thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to check out our latest upload and our recommended video and be sure to subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads.